I've been holding on to various parts and pieces from past projects in order to one day build some sort of an off-road trailer. And then last year, my friend John gave me a Harbor Freight utility trailer that was basically on its way to the dump. Many of you followed along as we started from a bare frame and then we built an off-road trailer on top of it, threw it on top of a Land Rover Discovery axle with some suspension and some 35s. We assembled it with a whole bunch of random bolts that I pulled off of my 2021 Toyota Tacoma. We used takeoff shocks for my wife's Jeep Gladiator. We used tons of stuff that I've had laying around from other projects to try to put something usable together and to try to empty out some of these nooks and crannies in my shop that until recently have been full of junk. Today, we're gonna to put 1,700 miles on this trailer. We're gonna take it off road. We're gonna camp out of it with my family because that was the whole point of this. And we're gonna talk about everything that I have found good and bad with this trailer and talk about how we're gonna fix that stuff in the future. We used Onyx Off-Road to plan this adventure and Onyx Off-Road is the sponsor of today's video. Good morning. First night in the new setup and uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I loved about it. There's a whole bunch of stuff that are a bunch of problems I'm already discovering with this trailer. So this morning, after we have a little bit of breakfast, I'm gonna walk you through the whole camp. We're gonna talk about every little part and piece and we'll talk about all these little functionality issues that I'm finding with the trailer already. The first thing you do when you get to camp if you're sleeping in a rooftop tent is you level everything out. And since we were sleeping in a truck and we were sleeping in a trailer, that means we had to level both a truck and a trailer. This is more difficult than it might sound. So we used a combination of these little cheap orange blocks that we got from Walmart. We used some Max Tracks that I had mounted on the side of the trailer. And then we used the tongue jack to kind of raise the nose of the trailer up and raise the back of the truck up. And we were able to get things pretty dang close, but it was definitely more time consuming than I would have expected. And it's something that should be considered if you're gonna be sleeping out of two vehicles that are connected together. Once everything was leveled, we could deploy the tents, and in this case, both tents set up super fast. The iCamper 3.0 is an outstanding tent. It's very, very big, and we could technically put all four of us in it, but because my kids are so young, they do not sleep very well in the same bed together. So right now, I'm sleeping in the iCamper 3.0 with my son, and my wife and daughter are sleeping in our new GFC. It's a go-fast camper that we had installed in Bozeman on our way up here. The long-term goal is to have both kids sleep in the same tent once they get a little bit older, and then my wife and I can sleep in the same tent and you know just have a little bit of space, a little bit of a break at night whenever we all go to bed. The first problem with the trailer is that this is one big junk drawer, essentially. We're, it's a brand new setup, so we don't have any like organization or any way that, we don't have any system or any method, and it's already turning into a huge problem in terms of setup time and teardown time. On the other hand, Jessica's truck, I think, is very well organized, and it all comes down to one key feature. Jessica's truck has the decked system, and to be completely honest, this is one of our favorite parts of the Gladiator, simply because it's so easy for it to double as a place for her to organize kid stuff throughout the week or groceries or whatever. And then on the weekends, whenever we come out and do this kind of thing, we've got all of our camping gear all in these drawers organized and out of the way. So then we have a flat spot right on top to put whatever we need. Her deck system does give me an idea of how to possibly solve our organization problem in here. What do you, I'm curious on your thoughts. What do you guys think of, you know, a big slide like this, but one that would be for uh, gear. I guess I would make like a cabinet drawer, like a big cabinet drawer down here with the same, probably the same dimensions front to back. Then we'd still have a spot on top that we could store gear, um, but down low we could keep like dry goods and whatever. And then it would kind of compartmentalize things to where here in the back we would still have I guess it would still be a junk drawer, but it would be a compartmentalized junk drawer. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of the best ways to organize this space. Maybe do two cabinet drawers over there. And then I'm considering even adding another spot like that that we were, that we're keeping all of our kitchen stuff, adding something like this over here and taking advantage of some of this dead space up here. I'm curious on your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Oh yeah. I 
I am so ready to take this trailer out on the trail. And as soon as I got done filming this, the rainstorms came, thunder happened. It was it was pretty wild. The kids were a little bit afraid, but I think that this just is all part of the adventure. So once all that subsided and the sun came back out, we could finally put up camp okay? and hit the trail. Okay, with that rain we had this morning, this trail's a lot less dusty than last weekend. <laughs> Dude, no, I can tell. Normally, I'd be eating your dust even going this slow, but uh, no, this is perfect. The sun mysteriously came back out while we were putting away camp, and now we are hitting our very first little trail. I don't think it's gonna be Rubicon level trail, but there's a little bit of a washout. Things are getting flexy. It's looking good in the rear view, so I'm gonna drive, enjoy the truck, and see everything perform. Nice work picking the trail. This is perfect for a uh, truck and trailer type of thing. This is awesome. I so said there's a, up here there's a, a corner or two that we might have to work around a little bit, but other than that it should be pretty good. Hey, I like a good challenge. This is this is the part where I cut the video and then it like goes forward to be like toppling the trailer end over end. Yeah, well, let's hope that doesn't happen to either of us today. Now we gotta keep all six wheels on the ground. This truck and trailer combination feels absolutely amazing to drive off-road. I mean, it feels great on the highway, don't get me wrong, but off-road specifically with all these low gears, we got a four to one transfer case, 513 axle gears. We've got the low grunt of the diesel. It's just effortless, up hills, down hills. We barely have to touch our brakes. And when you combine that with how smooth the suspension of this trailer is and how smooth this articulating hitch is working, it makes it to where we don't have any bumps or noises or anything that's transferring through the chassis of the truck, which makes you feel a little bit uneasy. We don't have any of that. This is just an absolute dream right now. Suspension on that trailer just looks like it's working awesome on the trail here. That's good to hear from the back. From up here it looks awesome too, but I don't get the same vantage point as you. But it looks like, it feels really smooth. It's pretty rad to watch it. Okay, I'm heading down. Let's do it. I got eyes on the trailer. If anything looks weird, I'll have you stop. A lot of people don't consider this, but a single axle trailer does not flex the way that a double axle trailer would. So a double axle trailer will actually get some suspension articulation and it can stay a lot flatter, much like a Jeep or a Toyota or whatever the tow vehicle is. But when you have a single axle trailer, most of your suspension travel is just on bumps straight up and down, meaning that anytime you start to get off camber, that trailer gets off camber too. It, it can't take advantage of any suspension flex without there being some resistance from another axle. There were no hard obstacles on this trail, but anytime things did get a little off camber, it never felt uncomfortable because we built this trailer nice and wide and it felt pretty planted the entire time that we were using it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's uh, yeah, hang on, I'm gonna come up there. I'm gonna stand on one fender. That thing is really leaning over. You look good. That was, it, it 
I don't know. It might have looked worse than it was, but I'm telling you that looked like it was close. <laughs> I couldn't really tell from in here, so thanks, Ruth. Thank you. Here is the tunnel! <laughs> The trailer tour that Jerry is giving us takes us through an abandoned tunnel that's 1.1 miles long. This isn't something that's necessarily a great test on the trailer or anything like that, but it's something that I knew my kids would absolutely love. And at the end of the day, I build things like this trailer and this gladiator so I could give my kids a one-of-a-kind experience in the places that we travel. Wait, what do we need to do when we do on the tunnel? What should we do? Honk the horn! <laughs> Is my trailer a boat yet? Your trailer's almost a boat. I think your spare tire's keeping it afloat. Huh. Oh wow. Yeah, there's water drip. That's yeah. crazy how much water's dripping through there. It's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> What is he driving over? Oh, he's like rolling a log. I see, you were like rolling a log with you. Dude, are you looking at headlights up there? Yeah, we're uh, well committed now, so hopefully they can get it turned around or something. Well, this is about to be interesting. This tunnel feels a bit narrow for two-way traffic in my opinion, but we got pretty lucky. I didn't have to back up a truck and trailer half a mile or anything like that. The oncoming traffic ended up being some folks in some side-by-sides, which made them just narrow enough to pull off to one side, and we just barely squeaked by and were able to finish our way all the way out of the tunnel. By this time, we only have a couple hours of daylight left, so we need to hightail it up to camp, get set up, and relax a little bit. We're ready to rock, we were just cleaning kid faces. Cassie decided she wanted to be purple, so she colored her face. Jeep Gladiator as an off-road truck has a series of pretty cool off-road features that are available in the infotainment system. Some of those are just a bunch of different gauges so you can see if your transmission's getting hot or your coolant's getting hot, stuff like that. But it also has front and rear cameras that you have access to whenever you're in four-wheel drive. What I find kind of interesting is that when my wife was towing and she was driving her truck, she liked to use the front camera. And then whenever I was towing, I liked to use the rear. I find it I don't know, comforting to be able to keep a really good eye on the tow setup, make sure that nothing is coming undone or I don't know, there's a door open. For whatever reason, as I'm going forward, I like to have a really good bird's eye view of what I'm towing. But maybe because my wife is a little bit shorter than me, she probably just likes to be able to make sure she can see the terrain in front of her. So she likes to use the front camera. I've owned a whole bunch of different makes and models of off-road trucks over the years and by far, the Gladiator takes the cake for being the easiest one to modify and the best one to use once you actually get off-road. battery that I used in the trailer is one that I had in my TJ for like, I don't know, seven years, and I ran it really dead multiple times, so I have not taken good care of it. And on this trip, I'm discovering that it doesn't want to hold a charge very well, and it's been having a hard time getting it to take a charge, but now it looks like it's taking a charge, so let's see if it's fixed itself. Good news about the battery, that's says 13.5 volts now. So this is good, it says fully charged, so the battery is taking a charge. I don't know why it wasn't taking a charge before. Maybe it was so dead that 
the, the DC to DC charger didn't want to charge it or something. I have no idea what happened, but the the backup battery is working great now. So <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully it'll last all night. I'm going to probably leave these lights on for a good chunk of the night just to kind of load test the battery and see what happens. What? As we're talking, it's dropping. It just went down to 12.6. I think that was just for me turning on the light. 12.5. Ah, that is interesting. Yeah. So the battery works, but as soon as you put any load on it, the voltage drops like crazy, which I think is a pretty good indication that this needs to be swapped out with another battery. The ultimate goal is going to be to do three batteries so I could make uh, so I could weld on the trail, but that'll be in a future video we talk about that. This is Dirt Lifestyle. Yes. It looks like you do fit uh, to this table over here, but I can't help but notice that you're cooking on your truck instead. Would you yeah. like to explain to everyone why that is? It's a little bit better height. This is tall for me. Yeah. Yeah. But... I mean, it looks like an appropriate height, but, and you could make it work. Oh yeah, I could. But with that being slightly lower, you prefer and to cook there. And this is where the fridge is, and so it's easy to just yeah. kind of grab things. Yeah, and that's true. That's true. Move it over, so. So yeah, we've got our, this is where we wash all the dishes and then we have an extra table, table surface here. But what's nice is that with this setup, we basically have two tables just built into vehicles. Like these deploy within you yeah. know, like a 10 second deployment. So we don't have to have this, but it's nice, I think, to have a place. station, Cause then we can move the dirty dishes away from like the cooking area and just have it over there. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. What do you think of the view? It's gorgeous. Not bad, right? No, it's really good. Very much Montana. Yeah. It's good spaghetti. Oh, good. This trailer series might feel like it's over because it finally went off road, but I have a lot of fresh ideas that I want to incorporate into this trailer and future videos. So for now, we're gonna take a little break on this series. I'm gonna use the crap out of this trailer. I'm gonna write down a ton of ideas. And when we come back, I wanna build some sort of a water pump and filter system where we can just run a hose into a creek and we can fill up our 15 gallon water tank. I wanna build a diesel heater and I wanna duct it into the tents. I've got so many weird ideas that I wanna to try to express in this trailer. And if that's the kind of stuff that you came here for, I've got good news. There's a whole lot more of that ahead. I hope that this series has inspired you to build some stuff yourself. And I hope that the end of the series inspires you to grab your kids, get the keys to the truck, load it up and go out and enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching. And I hope I run into you on the trail sometime.